Welcome to a Legendarium special about the life of Nadasti Ferenc, the infamous husband of Elizabeth Bathory. In the comments section, let me know if you think Nadasti should be considered a hero or a villain. Nadasti Ferenc sprang from the union of two Hungarian aristocrats, Nadasti Tamas and Kanazasai or Solia. After 20 long years of marriage, the couple had their only surviving child at dawn on October 7, 1555 within the walls of Castle Sarvar. Two midwives, one German and one Hungarian, attended the baby boy's birth. The couple named their son after his grandfather, making him Nadasti Ferenc. He would not be baptized until October 21st, curiously. As a boy, Nadasti suffered from frequent illnesses, on one occasion being covered with boils. Yet thanks to the untiring efforts of his doctor, he survived. Young Nadasti's father took special care of his upbringing and he learned to play the lute. By age five, Nadasti could also read and write. His father, however, refused to spoil him and even urged his wife to spank her son from time to time. Indeed, the elder Nadasti wrote that his son would one day face the point of a bald spear, so he must not fear pain. In time, two Lutheran priests named Baith Istvan and Segedi Mete took over his education and he became a follower of the new faith. His father died when Nadasti turned seven years old, and his mother sent him to live at the imperial court in Vienna after his twelfth birthday. He grew up playing with the two children of the reigning emperor, Rudolf and Matthias, both of whom would become emperors in their own right one day. The reigning emperor sometimes even played with young Nadasti, leading him by the hand, and he joined in court plays. In his schooling, he learned Latin and German along with his native Hungarian. However, a darker side of his personality emerged in Vienna as well. Most Eastern aristocrats believed that servants did their best work when beaten often. Yet Nadasti took things further. He took to rolling up pieces of oiled paper, setting them between the toes of servant girls, set them alight, and then watched them dance. As he became a young man, Nadasti's widowed mother chose a bride for him, the young Elizabeth Bathory. An engagement ceremony took place in 1573, and the wedding between 19-year-old Nadasti and 14-year-old Elizabeth took place on May 8, 1575. More than 4,500 people attended, and the party lasted for three days, with much music, dancing, and drinking. However, it came to light that a year ago, Elizabeth had an affair with a peasant boy and had a child by him, whom she gave away. The child remained safe, but Nadasti ordered the peasant castrated and then fed to his hunting hounds. He treated his wife more kindly, gifting Elizabeth the castle of Sesje, located at the lower end of the Carpathian Mountains. Only a few years later, Nadasti became the chief commander of Hungarian troops and went to war against the Ottoman Empire. He also became royal stable master and often joined in meetings of the Hungarian Diet. However, Nadasti's career declined when several of his closest friends conspired to place Stephen Bathory, King of Poland, on the Hungarian throne. Unsurprisingly, the man currently on the throne objected to that. He summoned Nadasti and several of his friends to the court, where they would almost certainly be arrested. Rather than go peacefully, Nadasti remained on the frontier, fighting Hungary's on-again, off-again border war with the Turks, and he fought in battle personally. On one occasion, the Ottoman Turks dragged him from his horse, and he had to fight his way out of their clutches. During his occasional trips home to Sesce, Nadasti enjoyed a happy marriage with Elizabeth. The couple had three daughters named Orsolia, Catalin, and Anna, and two sons named Paul and Andres. However, the power couple really bonded over their love of carnage. For a present, Nadasti once gave Elizabeth a Freddy Krueger-esque clawed glove which she used to slash the faces of troublesome servant girls. Despite his rank cruelty, Nadasti remained a pious Christian, at least in his own mind. During 1591, he attended the Sespreg Synod, where he and fellow Lutheran lords banished Catholics from their estates. 
Saravar Castle became a stronghold of Lutheran learning and culture. Nadasti even founded a print yard, which turned out some of the most important books of the Reformation. He also continued his military exploits raiding deep into Ottoman territory. His most famous deed came during February 1587 when he captured Kopany Castle during a harsh winter. After seizing the castle by a surprise, he destroyed it with gunpowder blasts. Even an Ottoman Turk chronicler named Ibrahim Pesvi wrote that Nadasti has no match in the court of the emperor or the sultan who goes everywhere and wins everywhere. However, the cruelty Nadasti already showed to servants would be used against the Ottoman Turks. After a 1589 battle, the Ottoman Turks impaled three Hungarian prisoners on wooden pikes through their rear ends and up through their mouths. They squirmed and frothed like frogs for hours before they finally died. In response, Nadasti did the same to six Ottoman prisoners. And after years of back and forth raids, full scale war finally erupted in 1593 when 38 year old Nadasti took charge of his king's armies. The Sultan offered Nadasti the Kingdom of Bohemia as a bribe in exchange for staying out of the war. However, Nadasti would do no such thing. During the first campaign season, he captured several fortresses along the Drava River, and during the following years, he built new fortresses to shore up the faltering Hungarian border. His greatest victory came at Papa Castle in 1597. These many victories made the already wealthy nobleman even wealthier. The king even gifted Nadasti golden spurs as a token of his favor, and he took the lead in peace talks. However, at the height of his power, his wife Elizabeth grew increasingly dangerous. A woman named Anna Darlovia, rumored to be a witch, entered the household. Under her tutelage, Elizabeth grew more bloody-minded, until a suspicious number of servant girls began dying of what Elizabeth claimed to be cholera. When a local priest demanded that he be able to examine the corpse of yet another servant girl, Elizabeth stormed out of the room, leaving a bewildered Nadasti to smooth the matter over. Could Nadasti have halted his wife's descent into darkness? We will never know for sure. Soon after, he suffered a sudden and unexplained illness that caused him to collapse in the middle of yet another battle. Soon after, the disease left his legs paralyzed, and he caught a slight case of death on January 4, 1604, which ended his otherwise sterling career. His priest, Magari Istvan, called Nadasti a star of Hungary, a mirror of the valiant, a shield of the country, and a faithful guardian of all Christendom. One would wonder if the people he tortured would agree, yet the blood he shed, at least according to legend, would be nothing compared to what his deranged widow Elizabeth would do. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.